It's Tuesday, which means it's time for Normal World. And that means I'm Dave Landau. And with me today, as always, is Angela. Hi. Hello. So glad to be back. It's good to have you oh, back. I missed you guys. And also today, sitting in for Quarter Black, who is in Las Vegas, please welcome to the show, Matt McClowry. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Matt. Oh, oh, oh. You got what? What gigs you got coming up? I'm with you in Tacoma and Spokane, where I will also be headlining that Sunday. And then next month, I'm at Hilarities in Cleveland with you. I'm headlining Thursday and Sunday also. Yes. So come to the shows where he's not headlining, which will be Friday <laughs> and Saturday. Yeah, because uh, it's not like I have a daughter or anything. Well, I have a son. <laughs> Let's wrestle. <laughs> Your house is paid off. Mine's, yes. mine's a problem. Uh, <laughs> well, that's between you and... Uh, it's between me and the Indians. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Also, uh, you can check out my special right now. It is available still on ComedyGenie.us, Comedy Genius, but it also is available on Amazon and also Tubi. Because I'm a somebody. You can just go there, look up a prison tent. It's there, rent it, leave a good review. There's enough hate in the world. You don't have to be a part of it. And this weekend, you can catch me at the Orpheum in Twin Falls, Idaho, with Derek Richards opening up the show. It's going to be great. But enough of this nonsense. Let's welcome today's guest. He's the host of Weird Medicine, one of my favorite people, and one of our favorite guests. Please welcome Dr. Steve. Ahoy, my friend. Ahoy to you. How are you? I'm very well. Good. Thank we you. had fun today. Yes, we did. We filmed some sketches people will see. We'll see those uh, next week, I think. And we've got, we had yeah. you here, which uh, there was an eclipse yesterday. I don't know if anybody heard about it. <laughs> and uh, many, many. Well people, kept secret. Well kept secret. Many people died, but we can't get into those numbers yet. The body count's not up yet. But we did have you here and uh, it was exciting. It was very exciting. It was a bucket list thing for me. Thank you for you all having me here. And it was fun just being the science guy for a day. It really was fun being the science guy it for was. a day. And I got to ask questions like I was learning something. <laughs> I felt good about it. Is that a picture? Unlike other talk? science guys, he's an actual doctor too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like every single influencer who claims to know? Is that a picture you took? Look yeah. at that. Oh, it's not. Actually, his are better than that, but I wanted to wait to reveal them in the, the video we're going to see. In a oh, second. okay. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, I brought my, uh, I shipped my telescope and uh, we had solar binoculars and solar glass. We did a little class on celestial mechanics out in the, out in the plaza out there. It was fun. It was a blast. And on average, an eclipse occurs uh, in the very same place every 375 years. Wow. See, he learned something. See, and yes, the next exactly. eclipse, which you told me is going to be in 2044. Correct. 2045. No, 44. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, oh. That's actually wrong what you're reading oh. on the screen. Hmm. Right? Yeah, that's right. In the contiguous wow. United States. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, you're welcome. There are eclipses <laughs> twice a year on average, and they're just in different places. Yeah. And so well, the contiguous United States won't see one again until 2044, so, you know, 20 years from now. Did It'll, you know that the Google search for my eyes hurt spiked immediately after? I believe it. Millions? <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's take a look. That is hilarious. You did a video on that that people can see on the Normal World Instagram that's apropos to that Google search. They can. I burn my eyes out, <laughs> and it's no good. I still can't see very well today, mm -hmm. which is fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen enough. I looked at an eclipse when I was an infant, and that's why this one doesn't work. Is that right? <laughs> That's what your parents told you yeah, instead, of, right. <laughs> instead of just mom drank. So let's take a mom look. Mom didn't. Oh, that's true. Your dad's sperm was so <laughs> potent. Only, you're the only person who's ever got fetal alcohol syndrome from their father. <laughs> <laughs> your dad was. <laughs> My only comeback is like, I'm not. <laughs> well, it's not even a comeback. Yeah. You, you started the joke. Yeah, I just I know, I know. added to it. <laughs> I, anyway. I have relatives. No. I've got three siblings. <laughs> they all turned out fine. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a level of yeah, niceness. Maybe it wasn't that. <laughs> yeah. Could have been a, a, a something else, vaccine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? 
I don't want to say that. Mm, we're on YouTube. Oh, yeah. It wasn't a vaccine. <laughs> Let's take a look at the video. So you just go zoom in. Yep, yep. There we go. I got it. There you go. And then you can zoom in. 35 minutes till totality. Very exciting. And we've got blue sky. Can you go blind? Yeah, absolutely. People go blind every year doing stupid eclipse practices. Like permanently blind. Permanently blind, yes. The lens in your eye focuses light. The sun is extremely, extremely bright. If you've ever cooked an ant with a lens before, you can do that to, you can do that to your retina as well. So don't do that. Even with the sun mostly occluded by the uh, moon, you can still burn your retina, so don't do that. Is that view on sponsor? Yeah. Are we getting like the best view of it, like in Texas? Yes, this will be a very good view here. We're close to the middle of the total eclipse. We'll get about four minutes of totality. Is fluid in your top five words? Yes. Fluids, secretions, <laughs> pustulance, tumescence. That's a good word. <laughs> if you make just a pinhole now, you can see a crescent shape. Oh, wow. You know? I <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see the sun is actually being refracted by the pinholes in the leaves. A myriad of crescents now. But during the total eclipse, we've got four minutes to just look at it, take the filters off, take pictures, but take at least a minute, right? Take, take at least a minute to disregard it. And just be here. Be in the moment for once in your life and just uh, watch this amazing thing. Because you might die soon. Yeah, I'm probably going to die sooner rather than later. Not you. I didn't oh, mean you. Right. Here we go. One minute. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. Wow. Crazy. That was really fun. That was cool. Yeah, I really can't thank you enough for coming out and doing that. Oh, thank you for letting me do that. That was amazing. I didn't realize that Dallas was going to be right in the... Mm. I wish you were here. When I was here Go six ahead. months ago, I knew that. And I sort of mm. you know, said, hey, maybe we could do a, an eclipse thing. It was really just a way to finagle a free trip to uh, Dallas. Well, you got it, my friend. So you were just using us? Yes, yeah. of course. Well, that's a, <laughs> okay. it's a show business. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I thought that that David Goggins Motiversity theme music really sold it. <laughs> I felt like I was there. Well, you know, that's, that's the only way that people the, will watch now. Alan Parsons Project ripoff. How else will you know it was an emotional yeah, Exactly. Event? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you actually, you have to know how others feel in order to know how you feel. This is 20. So I have to be manipulated? <laughs> correct. Emotionally by stock music? That's correct. Yes. I'm glad you appreciated it. <laughs> I had a lot of interesting questions that didn't make I it. I missed it because my wife and I were paying credit cards. <laughs> She's like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, I thought you knew. Really? Yeah. Well, the sad thing is, too, I is like that's it, more important to you. It is. Yeah. She goes through those with a fine tooth comb. She, huh? she literally does yeah. twice. She does yeah. it twice. That's probably smart. I, it I, is very smart. I just assume that the stuff on, the, you know, my credit card is, is something I bought. Herbie's Boner Pills. <laughs> Mustang Ranch. <laughs> well, we have you here. So I'm gonna a dozen CVSs, and it was like, that's Dave. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that is me. I actually have kept CVS in business. You literally have. Yeah, because I'm the only person who feels like paying eight times more than they should for everything. <laughs> it's like we, we stop there here, and I'm like, we're not on the road, Dave. You have an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, I don't want to. I, 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 I don't want to go to, like, Walmart. Mm. No offense if you go to Walmart. It's just your garbage. Um, <laughs> fat and poor. Speaking of which, we do have questions uh, from our fans. So we can, uh, I do want to ask you these actually before we get into other stuff, because we have a doctor here and people have enjoyed the segment Ask Dr. Steve. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yes. And I enjoy I, doing those. Yes. And I have some questions for you that have been, uh, people have written in and maybe I'll have my own questions. All right. Okay. Let's start it out. Do we have a little Ask Dr. Steve clip? Okay, great. We'll just go with this then. <laughs> 
Dr. Steve, my girl and I were in Death Valley National Park hiking, and it was 120 degrees. Mm. She kept saying to me that we could spontaneously combust because the temperature was high. I wanted to throw her off the hillside, but instead I figured I'd ask you, is it impossible for a human to spontaneously combust, we really could have shortened this, when the temperature is 120 degrees or as my girl as dumb as I think she is, from Jason F. Well, Jason, if that is your real name. Um, spontaneous combustion is one of those things that's been in the sort of the the zeitgeist of uh, society for a long time. I remember when I was a kid reading about people spontaneously combusting in their homes. And it turns out that the common factor is morbid obesity, alcohol, and cigarettes. You're looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is um, this person with lots of extra adipose tissue – um, you know, it gets intoxicated, smoking, falls asleep, catches on fire, catches the bedclothes or the bed on fire and sleeps through it. And then what happens is as they start to burn, hmm. their fat is turned into basically human kerosene. It's like a grease fire. Yes. And it accelerates the fire. And then they're found, uh, you know, just a charred husk. And then people say, oh, you know, that was a spontaneous human combustion. But it's not. But it's really just fat cigarette smokers. Right. Dying in their home. Right. Fat drinkers cigarette smokers dying in their home now uh, lest you doubt me on this you know average size body takes not, two hours to cremate fun. yes uh, a body more than 300 pounds takes four or five hours and when you get above that a lot of the uh, crematoriums will say it increases their risk of uh, fire and damage not only to the crematorium but to their employees because of the grease fire aspect. So. so because, like, let's say Whoopi wanted to be cremated, they'd want to cut her in half? I don't know. <laughs> sure. So you're saying that if, if a full body, though, like there's a weight limit to cremation? Well, I mean, first off, you got to be able to cram them in the the. It would be funny if you furnace. were taking, like, a broom to mash somebody yeah, right. because they're five bills. Yeah, it's, you know, we all have different uh, definitions of funny, but, but, it, <laughs> Thank you, <Steve>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, look at him being all doctory. On that's the mind. first thing. And then, yes, then if there's a ton of fat tissue that can liquefy, then the thing can flame on and you've got a problem on your hands. Wow. I don't know. Did not know there was a weight limit to being cremated. I have two goals now. In life. <laughs> one is to be cremated and the other one is to be to so be refused fat. yep to be refused <laughs> and then stick someone with the problem there you go <laughs> also the uh, which plan b is to get fake tits before my funeral <clears throat> i still stand by that i plan on doing it i like it well why not mm. just to confuse people but you care well join yeah. the club <laughs> I know, right <laughs> Maybe yeah. they don't have to be fake <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh no my tits are very real and they're <laughs> wonderful <laughs> matt spectacular What's up? How do you want to be buried? Uh, you know, I don't want to be cremated in case they figure out how to bring people back to life. That's actually a good point. You would mm. come back to life? I would, yeah, absolutely. I don't want to die. Just... You're, that's odd. <laughs> I don't want to come back just to be <laughs> suicidal again. <laughs> Imagine Grass getting brought back. Bring it. I think it'd be funny if we do come up with that and we just start bringing back people who killed themselves. <laughs> like, uh, 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 no. And shaming that. them for it. They just come out of that like chamber in Canada. <laughs> well, if you killed yourself and uh, I could bring you back, I would. Thank you. <laughs> that means a lot to me. I mean, I'd regret it like a day and a half later. <laughs> I don't complain that much. <laughs> Two days later, you're like, I wish I would have just left you dead. <laughs> hey, aren't you glad you're back? No, not really. I, I, I could have brought him back. Did I have to give him a phone again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so personal. I don't know if I get it. All right. You're Dr. Steve. I have uh, what one could only describe as blood, a bloodbath situation in my poop shoot. Hmm. Did I write this in? It's, <laughs> it's taking over my life, and I find it, I'm almost killing brain cells being on the phone more because I'm on the bowl more. <laughs> I do take vitamins and attempt to eat well, minus my sugar addiction. 
But is this seriously? Did you write this about? All right. It's but- sincerely, Lave Dando. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my bowels keep bowling. What can I do to make this fluid uh, fl- a flood stop? Mm. Please help. This issue is ripping my family and my sphincter apart. Thanks for your help, Davin Goodwin. It's Davin tearing Goodwin. my ass apart. Am I bleeding everywhere? <laughs> The uh, uh, I I can't tell if from that question if they're talking about having blood in their stool. I think it's IBS, or if it's just fluid, just you know, watery diarrhea. Yes. So irritable bowel syndrome. The name of my band is it's a great band name. Is uh, it comes in three varieties. There's IBS D, which is this type of the is the D for Dave for diarrhea. <laughs> so yes. Boy, do I. <laughs> Does that never God. stop? And then uh, IBSC for constipation. Okay. And then and then there's a mix where they alternate between the two. Okay. I'm that guy. And yeah, some people will have diarrhea and cramps and then they'll be constipated. And uh, and then it will, and then they'll just sort of alternate between the two at some interval. And uh, it's very common. If you just have constipation without abdominal pain, they don't call it irritable bowel so much. It's right. just chronic constipation. Um, the, this variety is thought to be caused by some inflama- inflammation in the bowel, might be caused by a bad colony of bacteria, or maybe um, something that they're eating or whatever is irritating the bowel, or, or it could just be genetic. So um, there is a, uh, you know, the classic thing is increase the fiber in your diet. Yeah. And do that with citrus cell. Citrus cell is methyl cellulose. It's the stuff that they uh, made slime out of in the Ghostbusters <laughs> movies. And it's not digestible by the bacteria in your gut, so it doesn't cause flatulence, unlike psyllium fiber, which is in Metamucil, or the f- really good one, which is inulin or uh, chicory, which is in uh, Benafiber. Okay. Chicory is so flatulogenic, in other words, it causes farts, mm. that we were going to, when I was on Opie and Anthony back in the day, we were going to do a flatus contest, a fart contest. <laughs> and I was going to give- one. <laughs> I was going to give- He would have. Yeah. He, he I was going to have everybody eat different things and then take inulin fiber because it will, if you take that, you'll just be farting for days. <laughs> so, you know, you, can, you don't want to have a fart contest and everybody's just sitting there- not being flatulent. No, that would ruin the whole be thing. Stupid. You'd just be having a sitting contest. Right, 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 <laughs> right. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so that was sort of the classic thing: was add fiber to your diet. And uh, there is a new, relatively new treatment for IBSD that this person could try. It's a medical food called Enterogam. And Enterogam is bo- serum bovine antibodies. You know, when they kill a cow, they don't waste anything. Yeah. You know, they even take the bull's penis and make dog treats out of it. Yes, don't I know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, and they call them bull's pizzles, which is some euphemism. It's just call it bullcock and, you know, we'll still yeah. buy it. Of course. Dogs will still eat it. But anyway. Um, My dog loves cock. Do they? Really? I've never actually bought one. No, I've never bought They're one. They're curly cute. They're weird. If it's I like, have, I don't want to buy it. I don't. It seems disrespectful to throw a bull's penis to a dog and just have it gnawing on well, it. You don't want to give yeah. them the taste for penis either. <laughs> no, that's very true. It's a good point. My, I already have a cavapoo, and I'm afraid he likes dick. <laughs> <laughs> just for being a gay dog. Sure. No, I, I got it. I know. I'm just want to explain. <laughs> hey, you can give, you're a dog. Maybe if it was like a police a dog. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. You should feed curly dicks to police dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I've always said that. <laughs> Is the police, <laughs> people aren't mad enough at yeah. cops already. Well, I went into the weeds, which is my... No, no, no. Sorry, I did, but No, I think it's important. Go but, on. Um, they also will preserve cow antibodies. So if you're a vegan, you won't want to do this, but the cow antibodies, you can ingest them. Many of them will survive to the bowel and they will bind to the toxins or antigens or whatever that are causing the inflammation in the bowel and it will just calm it down i've had so they we, bind to the toxins yes and then like, now like the toxins used housewife that keeps going back <laughs> right. all right the toxins now can't come into contact with the bowel wall because they're bound by these antibodies okay now um we use this in chemotherapy uh with folks that have what's called mucositis where the chemotherapy just 
damages the bowel wall or the wall of the, you know, the GI tract in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, it works very well for that, too. And um, so Enterogam is the stuff I would recommend if they've tried everything else. What you don't want to do is start taking... um, low modal or, you know, the, um, the opioid type, um, bowel, um, paralyzers basically, right. because then those become habit forming and you have to take more and more and more of it to just keep from having watery diarrhea. So, well, yeah. And with opioids, I mean, that just constipates you. And then Correct. if you even want to go to the bathroom, you got to take an enema. So well, that's why they give it to people with diarrhea. Forever. They'll give them a, you know, a paragoric is opium. Yes. Now, here's a fun fact. Why don't they just move to Japan and become a superstar? (laughs) (laughs) What's the fun fact? I want to know. There's just so many people with this. That's the problem. I don't think Japanese or Japan could absorb all of these people and they'd all be famous. Right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. What's the fun fact? The the fun fact is is that uh, they sell one ounce bottles of tincture of opium to parents with kids who are teething. It's called paragoric, but it's tincture of opium. And you put it on your finger, and then you rub it on the kid's gums. Well, after the kid's done teething, the you still have do whatever you the kid, want. Yes, you still have about an ounce and of heroin left. The yes. kid sleeps a lot, but he's amazing at jazz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these what parents are doing, some, not all, of course, are soaking their cigarettes or other types of cigarettes in the paragoric, and then you put it in a dehydrator or in the oven. Kids don't do this at home. I'm not advocating this. But then people are smoking opium in 2024 in the United States. Wow. Yeah. Well, so, so there you go. heard it here first. If you have <laughs> IBS, you can do heroin. You can. <laughs> or if you just have a baby. Yeah, either way. <laughs> you have IBS and want to talk to God. Right. <laughs> and if your baby needs to some sleeping for teething, just rub a heroin on its gums. <laughs> that would work. You have a doctor's permission. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, yes, well, I mean, do they, not. They used to prescribe heroin all the time, right? It was a prescription drug at one Wasn't point. it for coughs or something, though? Yeah. I, I mean, all opioids will um, uh, reduce the cough reflex. The, the interesting thing is dextromethorphan, right? Robitussin DM or Mucinex DM is a cough suppressant, but it's the right-handed molecule. Some of these molecules are right-handed and left-handed. It's the right-handed molecule of levomethorphan, which is an extremely potent um, uh, opioid, you know, more potent than even uh, hydromorphone or dilaudid. But you take it in the D, the D molecule, you have to drink a gallon of that stuff to, you know, for it to hit your body the way that, uh, say, a Percocet does or something. But it still uh, stills that cough reflex. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can take any opioid. Some some cough syrups have hydrocodone in it. That's also known as Lortab or Norco or Vicodin. Yeah. Okay, so the stuff that I shot in my arm did have an actual... <laughs> it had a positive effect on your I cough. No sneezes. <laughs> now we have another one. Dear okay. Dr. Steve, I'm a woman in my 40s, and I am currently in the throes of menopause. Mm. Hot flashes, low sex drive, you name it. And there are home remedies you can... Uh, you can rec- are there any ho- sorry are there any home remedies you can recommend for dealing with it so basically this uh lady is uh not having an orgasm no. in her 40s what do you say oh she's not having an orgasm hmm. who cares <laughs> you agree i'm just kidding thank you well, sorry you ladies uh, okay dave made me say that joke um <laughs> i did not <laughs> i was mad <laughs> so um no there are some home remedies but it's called dave dick <laughs> They'll give you an orgasm. <laughs> if you're in your 40s. In an eight-inch bottle. And you're going through menopause, I would get checked first. If you're, really? What yeah, you the average check? age is around 51. How do you get checked for orgasms? Well, for menopause. <laughs> menopause. Oh. For I'm menopause. Sorry. So menopause occurs when uh, the ovaries stop producing eggs and they stop producing estrogen. And so you get a drop in estrogen. And men have sort of a similar thing called andropause, but it's a lot slower for them. It's very sudden for women. And the symptoms are, just as she said, uh, irregular or no periods. Um, uh, lo- sometimes loss of libido, hot flashes, just feeling crummy. And uh, there are some supplements that you can take, but I would c- 
I would make sure first that what she's really having is just standard garden variety menopause. Oh, so there's different versions you can have? Um, you know, there are other things that can mess with your hormones. And so you want to just make sure that you're just dealing with ovari early ovarian fa uh, failure. Uh, she may have women in her family say, yeah, we all went through menopause early. And that's reassuring. I'd still get checked. We don't really treat it with estrogen anymore, although vaginal dryness, we can use estrogen cream. So we have to save that for the goofballs who want to be girls. You said it. I did not. But you... Thank you for keeping this in line with the channel. <laughs> well, I had to make sure <laughs> we were bringing had... it back. I want to make sure we still science. have people listening. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You were, no, no, no. You were losing the subscribers. All right. no, so. I'm sure I didn't want to lose any more. So. Yeah. Dr. Steve, what do you recommend to her husband? Uh, lots of lube. <laughs> Lots of lube and go easy, and uh, you, even if in. she says no, it's well, <laughs> <Yes>. no. <laughs> but they need to have a chat. What See, does it? What it, what does it take, take? No for an answer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, take no for an answer. But talk to her about what it is required for her to uh, uh, to be sexually aroused now, because that's going to change. I would assume having a husband that's the same age as you that you've banged a bunch of times could. Decrease your libido. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, of course. I'm just I'm just taking the female. Part I can confirm here. that. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody married, you just kind of go. Is this you want this? No. Nah. All right, I'm gonna go have some soup. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How are you gonna do? Well, I appreciate your advice and your wisdom. Thank thank you, you, it means a lot to me. Well, thank you. And I actually mean that. No, it means I a lot to me I that say you that to people that you ask me these questions, give me an opportunity to answer them. What if you have? Okay. okay. Let's say you have severe depression. Okay. And you're on SSRIs. This, yes. this is actually important. Right. Uh, for, for Matt. <laughs> um, <laughs> no one believes you. <laughs> um, Not a person. No, I know. We all know. <laughs> somehow, somehow you've gotten happier. I don't know what happened to the world. Um, but a woman, liked, say, a woman didn't blow me off. <laughs> one liked me. It's all it took. Is that oh, what it is? Yeah, it, Good for you. It only takes one. That's true. Oh, well, that's true. Well, actually, the song is It Takes Two. But, you know, you're a doctor. So um, if you're massively depressed, and let's say you're on SSRIs, what are the damaging effects of them? Because I feel like they are a serious problem for a lot of people. And is there something that they can do? I know that we've discussed uh, ketamine, but maybe a non-drug-related thing that you might recommend. Yeah. Um, they so the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors were a big move forward because prior to that, we had things like amitriptyline, nortriptyline. They were serotonin, norepinephrine. It doesn't matter. They were just a different class of drug. But they had a lot of adverse effects like anticholinergic effects, which means things like dry mouth and fast heart rate. Checking and, into the Mandalay Bay. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. And and also uh, increased risk of dementia Yeah, with anticholinergic medications. And uh, so the SSRIs were a big move forward, but not everybody just has a problem with low serotonin. That's the, that's the issue. Right. And if you take these, many men will have sexual dysfunction with them. They may have delayed ejaculation. Mm -hmm. They may have, um, the, you know, inability to get an erection, those kinds of things. Now, for those people, I do have sort of a, a you know, a home remedy that they can try. Hookers? <laughs> well, maybe, but... Uh, because, you know, that would increase the excitement factor, so it might overcome the, the problem. Right. Um, to make it a whole new disease. Yeah, and it's, and yeah, especially if, you know, the guy that's... Well, that's the last one know. off your checklist. You might as well. D me? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I'm too much of a germaphobe. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And I'm married. You're guilt-ridden. <laughs> but I got led with that one. <laughs> she's, but, not, um, she's not watching. She watches this. <laughs> she does. Yes. Oh, I know it's what you, you wouldn't think so, because but you know there were other programs I was on. She didn't. No. Go on. Hi, Mrs. Dave. She's be, he's being a good boy. I promise. Oh yeah, I don't. Please, I I'm, I'm soft as <laughs> ice cream in a hot summer sun. So go on. Well, one of the home remedies you can try if you have delayed ejaculation with these things is to actually take a non-drowsy antihistamine. Is that when it happens like several days later? <laughs> like you're just at the mall. Right. 
<laughs> or is it like, okay. No, it just, it's I'm any sorry. time that you don't feel you can ejaculate in the amount of time that you feel like you should, then it's oh. delayed ejaculation. Give it a try. And you can try um, to take loratadine, which is, um, an, you know, Claritin. And a non-drowsy antihistamine. And sometimes that'll reverse those effects. I had some people call into my show, uh, Weird Medicine on Sirius XM, Check who have called in uh, with this exact same problem. And we've made that recommendation, and a significant fraction of them have gotten some relief just by doing that. <clears throat> you take it about 30 minutes before intercourse, so it ruins the spontaneity, but at least you can perform. Well, if that doesn't work, they have another drug. Well, I mean, it doesn't ruin the spontaneity for both of you necessarily. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Point. And I like the way you're sitting when you said that. <laughs> you're getting lower in the chair. No, I'm <laughs> creepier. Matt's just staring off into space while I'm talking. I'm just boring the shit. No, out you're of no, that's all, that's all, that's autism. That has nothing to do with why I'm sitting like. No, why he's sitting like a lady. <laughs> Like sitting like <laughs> you're sitting like he's about to be inner like you're sitting on a black casting couch like you are. <laughs> Quite delightful. We have to get a different camera angle. Ask I just feel like tired Picard right now. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh yeah, because you got the big. Yeah. I look a little like William Shatner. I look like yeah. if I had if young William Shatner had the old one's body. Mm. That's me. Mm. Go on. Okay. Sorry. I'm Sulu. Then I'm Frank. Then I'm. Uh... Well, have you have you known anyone that had the opposite problem with premature ejaculation? Uh, I know a guy who did, and then the SSRIs did help with that. <laughs> but then he stopped taking them, and then it just went back to the same problem. Not premature, but just very much like, hey, one of us are going to enjoy this. Right. Well, again, premature ejaculation is just when you ejaculate before you think you should. Okay. Well, and uh, yes, and we'll use SSRIs for those people just to treat that primarily, although that's not the best treatment for it. The best treatment is a behavioral treatment where you uh, actually practice edging. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, but isn't that bad for your penis to no. practice edge? It's not? No, not, not, well, I mean, if you extre if you're doing it for hours and hours, you get, uh, uh, prostatic congestion, which we call blue balls, and it's un yeah. unfortunate. But yeah, we've all had a hand job in high school. Right, right. Uh, yes, it's the number poorly of administered of hand blue job. Blue balls is uh, is a bad high school hand job. Mm. But uh, yeah, those people, uh, you get a rubber rubber vagina. Can I say rubber vagina on say? this show? I was talking to. Oh, I know who you were talking to. <laughs> she didn't know what women. edging was, and so I was explaining it to her. Oh. And she's like, well, okay. "We don't got to do that." <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, doctor. <laughs> okay, well, I just can I say rubber vagina on this show? Yes. Okay, so you take a rubber vagina and you lube it up. I mean, Ken is coming in soon. <laughs> and then you plop it on a table. Instead of putting it on your erect member and jacking it up and down, put it on a right. table and have intercourse with it. What if it's a, a dining room table that you feed your family? It's on? fine. Just, it's fine. Yeah, just, just clean, clean it, it up. off. Yeah, clean it just up. Just don't right. let everybody know you've had sex with I don't, the table. Uh, yeah. It's better to pray before a meal. Honey, I'm going to have sex with my rubber vagina on the <laughs> dining room table. I'll be done in 15 minutes. So you say don't do it's it. It's a glass the table with an 80s action star under it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wearing opera gloves. <laughs> But if you do that, you can, uh, what you want to do is, is get up to the point where you feel like that feeling is coming right. and then withdraw and then put your hand around the shaft and your thumb over the urethral meatus, AKA the cock hole and until okay. the feeling goes away and then do it again and keep practicing. Now you're starting off on your own. Mm -hmm. If you have a partner that is, uh, willing and you have a good relationship with, now you can do it with them. Okay. Right. I, I feel like a member of our team quit all over again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't well, know. Like, no, no, you're right. Like five for five inside jokes. No one. No, I know, but it's it's perfect sorry. though. I'm sorry. loving it, and I don't care. I'll tell you where a good place to do that would be would be in your bed. Correct. And where? And if you're in bed, what better way to enjoy your bed than with Miracle Made sheets? Mm. I'll tell you that much. Is that what we're doing today? Yes. Correct. Oh, good. Do you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold and you don't have menopause, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. They're inspired by NASA. They're made with, uh, you know, with silver infused fabrics, and they're a great place to edge. 
The betting is... <laughs> Edge your bets. <laughs> edge, your, edge your bets. Uh, but they really are great. I have them myself. They keep you a nice, perfect temperature all night long. I think you'll enjoy them if you go to miracle.com slash normal. They're not very expensive. Try miracle.com. Oh. I meant to say try miracle.com. Yeah. I kept thinking it was try edging.org. Use your promo normal at checkout and you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. And that is hand, face, and body. Did you know that, Matt? Mm hmm. Mm. You've tried them. You like them. Yeah, they're excellent. I bought them after the last time I was here. Did you like them? Yes, I love them. I've honestly recommend real. them. real, I'm, you know. Yeah. I mean, here we are. What am I going to say? But for real, they're, some, they're the best sheets I have. I really love them. Yep. And they keep my head cool at night. Mm -hmm. I get a very hot head. And then I, it's just, you wake up sweaty. I don't like that. I don't like to wake up sweaty and scared and alone <laughs> in a driveway. I may triumph. have been a little premature on them. <laughs> <laughs> like, honey, it's not you. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's also the sheets. <laughs> I wish I knew about them earlier. They certainly were something that were delayed for me. Trymiracle.com slash normal. Use the promo code. You're going to like it. You're going to like your sheets. You're going to like your towels. And you're going to, for some reason, see a magic spot. <laughs> Are you going to fix it? I feel like you... How do you fix something when you break it all? Anyway, go to promo code. Use promo code NORMAL. That's trymiracle.com slash normal. WrestleMania. Let's talk about it. Matt, you're retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, in fact, Matt, uh, I actually, I do like wrestling. I've, of course, taken my son because he's young and just not special. Um, but it's a huge event every year. I don't know if anybody here has heard of WrestleMania. I brought my son a couple years ago. But we do have our own person who works here that's a big fan. Uh, so WrestleMania was held over the weekend in Philadelphia at uh, Lincoln Financial Field, uh, where the best sports fans are. And uh, please welcome right now John Cena's number one fan, Mark the Mark. Yep. All right, sit down. That's enough. Yep. Yeah. All right. Sit down. Sit. Is it? We can just get rid of him already. All right. Thank you. You're right. This was a bad call. Thank you, Matt. We really only have eight minutes left. That was probably the best way to go about that. <laughs> Uh, Ken was the one, he asked me some interesting <laughs> questions during the eclipse. Mark, you can come back in, actually. <laughs> or Mark. Mark the Mark. Where are you? Oh, I still have to do this. Oh, you don't have to do this. You're good. We, we have seven minutes. It's up to you. You've already been dragged off. <laughs> well, I filibustered for the whole show, so you don't have to do anything. We want you on the show. I'm talking to Dr. Steve. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, how would you sum up this year's WrestleMania? Oh, it was excellent. I watched it <clears throat> from my parents' basement. Okay. I'm not allowed to do it on the first floor anymore because uh, I do the moves on the furniture. Yeah, of course you do. Um, it was uh, the American Dream's son, Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, yes. versus Roman Reigns, who held the championship for 1,316 days. And it was going well. And there was a whole lot of commotion. And then all of a sudden, wrong pocket. Oh, what's in your pocket? Wrong pocket again. How many pockets do you have? Oh, my hero, John Cena, comes out, right? Okay, good. You have toys. I do. I have toys right. to emphasize what I'm trying to do here. I also have a clip that I brought. How often are you hospitalized with... The... Okay, let's see the clip. Let's see the clip. <laughs> all right, so here we have... John Cena and The Rock facing off. Okay. And look at that right there. Bald. Look at that. So they have all hmm. the money in the world, and then he even works for the communist Chinese, and they can't think to fix that. <laughs> it looks no. like alopecia areata, actually. So anyway, like John Cena right there. A singer? And then all of a sudden, oh, no, The Rock comes out because he's mad, and he gives him a rock bottom. Oh. You're doing that with toys? Dude. This was a mistake. But then the light goes out. Oh, the Undertaker gives the Rock a choke slam. Why do I, I feel like they're just kissing? All right, you're looking. At I have a feeling you're going to be working Thursdays again soon. Dave. Oh shit! 
I'm are you, are I'll you be sure? <laughs> you better hope I'm not because you're middling. <laughs> Don't I know it? You're going to be making $50. <laughs> anyway. Thank uh, you for having me on today. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. It's going to be one of our last shows, I'm sure. Uh, so, but, well, uh, Ken, do you have anything to ask Dr. Steve? I recently heard that uh, you have a history uh, with wrestling. That is true. So why don't you, uh, <laughs> where did you start? I, uh, nobody wants to hear this. I, uh, <laughs> I do. Nobody wants to hear any of this, but okay, fair. we're in too deep at this point. In the seventies. I think they wanted to hear the first parts with Dr. Steve. How dare you? Uh, no, I was talking about the wrestling, the wrestling stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. Nobody oh, wants probably. To hear well, yeah. some do. Some people tuned out. Yeah. I like wrestling. I was a camera person for Wide World of Wrestling and Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Oh, wow. Crockett Brothers. Yeah, the Cro Jim Crockett Promotions. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was a uh, cameraman awesome. for a year, and then uh, I was audio engineer for a couple of years, and I knew all those guys, Ric Flair, Wahoo McDaniel, uh, Mr. Wrestling Tim Woods, St uh, Ricky Steamboat. I almost That's said awesome. Steamboat Willie. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my Black Jack move. Mulligan. Did you know Ole Anderson? I did. I was just going to say Gene and Ole Anderson, and they would, uh, they would. Uh, one of the Anderson brothers would do the commercials because mm -hmm. you know they would have those commercials. You know, tonight in Dorton Arena, Texas Chainsaw Match. I was, yeah, Ole. And then you'd hear, you know, Wahoo McDaniel. If you're listening, well, of course they were listening. We had to do seventy of these commercials. There were thirty-five markets. We did two commercials for each, so they're just sitting right there, and. Um, it was uh, it was a real trip doing seventy of those things in one in one um, one afternoon because we'd do those right after the news on Wednesday and then we would do the show Wednesday night and um, I do you remember uh, Mighty Igor the Polish Prince mm -hmm. Yes okay so he was partnered up at the time with a guy named Baron von Raschke Baron von Raschke had the, the claw. claw. And uh, the Polish prince would sit up there. And it, by the way, and he had this accent, you know, I am the Polish prince. I, I believe he was from Kernersville, North Carolina, if I got it right. <laughs> and he would gnaw on a Polish sausage. And he would just gnaw on it. He would never take a bite of an, out of it and chew it and swallow it. He would yeah, just my dog loves it. those. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Same sort of thing. You know, he just gnaw on it uh, constantly. And uh, uh, one of my jobs as audio engineer was to set up the microphones for the morning show, which was a 6 a.m. farm show. And it was right next to where the wrestlers were. And one day I was cleaning up <laughs> the, uh, the set. I lifted up the sofa cushion and there were three of mighty igor's polish sausages just stuffed under the cushion so what he was doing was he would gnaw on the sausage and then just shove it under the the cushion and then come back the next week and stick the damn thing in his mouth <laughs> like a beagle <laughs> for real yeah, brought my my brian used to do that yeah your dog did yeah. anyway so yeah i know i'm a, i met brute bernard once uh right. met uh um, we had, um, Andre the giant once he was, I was literally just going to ask that renting himself out. He came to our studio one time I walked in the studio and your mind just can't, I mean, he's really only two feet taller than me, but when it comes to humans, yeah, it's, it's insane. Sure. Your brain can't comprehend it. I had to do a double take. He was just such a massive dude. I mean, he was seven feet. Yeah, seven. He wasn't or... that tall, actually, and he shrunk a little. But just the girth of him yes. too was astounding. He was leaning up against the wall, and it just looked like he was holding it up. Well, he had crushed uh, Jake the Snake's chest in the ring just Ooh. because he sort of missed. You know, mm -hmm. he had drank in you know imagine. two gallons of vodka instead of the usual <laughs> one, so he was slightly off. I don't know. Only a little, for real. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's great. I never made it to uh, the cameraman, but I did set up rings for a little while. Did you do any of that? Oh, absolutely. The rings were fun. Yeah. They would take, um, I think they were two by 12s, and they would stretch them from one end of the ring to the other. You know, there was like a, a, a you know, a metal flange that they would lay them on. Then you would take other two by 12s and put it lay them at right angles to that so you had a one layer going this way and one layer going this way and then they put six inch foam over that mm -hmm. and when you would jump on that or hit it or fall all those two by 12s would bounce against each other make this really thunderous yeah. noise i also oh, wow. had to uh, uh give um foot massages 
after I set up the ring. Did, oh, you did? Did you have to do that? No, I never had to do that. You had to give foot massage to the wrestlers? Uh, yeah, it was weird. I also had to do random foreign object checks, which is weird because I wasn't a ref. Where would you check for foreign objects? Oh, like in the locker room, the shower. It's weird. I'm sorry. In those rooms? or That's in... where they were asking to... So they were the ones getting checked? Yeah. Oh, they would ask you to do it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a different thing. Were you... Was this a wrestling circus? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you I sure? Set up the rings, then I do the foot massages, then foreign object checks. I don't, make... I don't think that's wrestling, Mark. Uh, well, I mean, I set up the ring. What was the ring? Can you get him out of here, please? <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Oh, I never had my headphones on. It's fine. Oh, wait, but you don't need them on because apparently you were molested. Oh, he's bending his knee the right way. That was always my favorite. <laughs> Matt they would bend the their knee the right way, and then the guy would, you know, writhe in pain. Matt has the same hair disease as John Cena. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were going to keep that a secret. We should, you know. What well, we should. you stood up in camera. Oh, please. <laughs> we've got Don Lemon, but we've also got Terrence Howard. Let's I do think. both. Let's do, let's both? dip into both. Dip in. Let's let's dip our let's dip our uh, freshly massaged wrestler feet <laughs> into these two. Let's take a look at. Uh, yeah, we need a palate cleanser. Yeah, we do. Terrence Howard's new look. It's something. <laughs> oh. Do we have a video? Is no, it just the it's just the pictures. It looks like Scat Williams. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you said earlier about him yeah. he looking like Eddie Murphy? He does it from uh, the James Brown <laughs> hot, hot, tub. hot tub. Hot tub. Yes. That's him now. That looks like something they would leave on the floor of a hotel after they pulled out the corpse of a dead prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> is that natural? <laughs> I, is he playing? Is he uh, playing the mom from that '70s show in an upcoming movie? <laughs> Farrah Nosset. Yeah, they're really going <laughs> far with this whole mixing up the race. What is the deal? I don't understand why he's. Do is this really how he's living? Yeah, yeah. Why is he crazy like this? He's an actor. He just woke up and thought he was Farrah Fawcett. I mean, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, Matt. <laughs> It's like it's like Rocky Dennis hair <laughs> and brain. Yeah. Well, that's Terrence Howard's fresh <laughs> new look. Well, no, he was talking about the plight of uh, black actors being underpaid too, and it was like a thing where it's like I've got this really important thing that's been eating away with me my entire career. I've got to say it, but first, <laughs> let me put on a woman's wig. <laughs> Well, because it was the whole Iron Man thing, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And then they were like, oh, that's great. We got you could have, like you could have the most little... serious thing to say. And like, just, you know, all the receipts, the smoking gun of evidence. And you're just good. That you could be on trial for the uh -huh. most serious thing. And whatever testimony you were giving, no one would listen to because the entire court would be going, <laughs> look at his hair. <laughs> You, yeah, you could be on trial for murder, have a videotape of the person who actually did it doing it. Yeah, and you're going to jail. <laughs> Let's do one more. Don Lemon. Oh, Don yeah, Lemon. Don Lemon got married, everybody. We can go ahead and... Let's take a look at the wedding photo. Do we have a wedding yeah, photo? Yeah, he tweeted out a picture of them. Uh, did he? Did yeah, he... coming down the... Let's take a look. Oh, boy. Well, there's two guys that aren't allowed to donate blood. <laughs> Uh, Brian Stelter was forcefully removed. Mm, it's got, it's he kept like a... sneaking frosting off the cake with his fat, sweaty <laughs> fingers. Well, once he found out the cake was gluten-free, he would have been pissed anyway. Mm. <laughs> that picture would somehow be less uncomfortable if they were wearing rollerblades. <laughs> I anyway. agree. Let's, let's put the picture back <laughs> put it, up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Mm. Let's take a look Is at this. Is this a deleted scene from a Devato ad? <laughs> I wonder if a family member didn't show up because they're interracial. Mm. <laughs> Those dogs look like uh, they've seen war. Yes, they have. Long night of nitrate poppers and chest pain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Anderson Cooper will join them. Mm. I'm sure he'd be pissed when he found out the cake was gluten-free. <laughs> he also would be pissed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, congratulations to Don Lemon yes. and his sister Lulu, who's less gay.
I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. I agree. I don't know why. <laughs> but I am actually very happy that the doctor came here today and shared. In You're the, the one. With us. I'm very happy. Everybody here is <laughs> happy. We're all very happy. Everybody's happy. Matt, you can join in as a host and say you're happy. I'm in a good mood. Yeah, are you? I'm sorry. I had to wake up at six this morning and, oh, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's and, and take my door. You could have texted me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I knew you were going to bring it. Right. Uh, let's... <laughs> Doctor, where can we find you? Oh, weird medicine. Uh, nobody, nobody cares. You do care, Doctor. Okay. <laughs> weird medicine. Uh, wherever you? podcasts are found, we're on Sirius XM channel one hundred and three. Yes, and I have, you know, I've got Patreon and all that. Just search weird medicine, you'll find me. I like it. Yep, thank you. I appreciate. Thank you. Coming on, and Matt. Yep, Matt McClowry. Every uh, platform. That is your name. <laughs> <laughs> I look like death right now. Yeah, I was going right. to say, uh, I don't know, right. every time I see you in the camera, I'm... Are you all right, though? Good. I'm just exhausted. I know. I bet you're tired. No. It's, yeah, I just had a long day to delay. I, yeah, I had to fly in from Tampa, had a, had a delay, had a weather that made the flight longer, and uh, yeah. No, I get it. I've, no. I've been on planes. <laughs> it's not the... It's, it's, <laughs> It's not the worst Boeing experience you could have had. <laughs> that's that's the way home. Yes. Uh, well, no, please. Your daughter's with you. Uh, the literal way. As long as your wife and daughter get home. <laughs> you, I do. Yeah. I hope you, I, I hope you do, too. I know. Obviously. Welcome. Let's do the end of the world. Okay. Get out of here. All right. What would be the craziest way for a professional wrestler to die, Matt? <laughs> With healthy and well-developed, well-adjusted adult children. <laughs> Dr. Steve. Uh, with a 401k. Oh, I like that. Angela. <laughs> um, sober. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, leaving behind their first and only spouse. Thank you all for tuning in. This is Normal World. We'll be back tomorrow where Matt will be sitting in for QB again, and I will be here, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>